Good evening, I'm Kimilia and this is Kini News. The Prime Minister dropped a bombshell today linking Perikatan National's election campaign funds to gambling companies. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim appeared to imply that Perikatan National's election funds partly came from gaming companies involved in special draws. He said the Finance Ministry has also found violations in the awarding of 600 billion ringgit without tender. Speaking at a press conference at the Prime Minister's office in Putrajaya this afternoon, Anwar said election funds for Malay and Islamic parties had come from the gaming companies. Similarly, like, like uh, what I referred to the issue of gambling, certainly this is partly used to finance the elections. We have to check on that, you see, whether you call yourself a Malay party or the Islamic party, notwithstanding the funds come from the gambling, gaming companies. Earlier, he chided the previous Perikatan National Government led by Bersatu and PAS for increasing the special draw from 8 per year to 22, a move they did in late 2020. He said that as Finance Minister, he had decided that starting January next year, the number of special draws would be reduced back to 8 per year. During the same press conference after the cabinet meeting, Anwar announced that ministers have decided to sacrifice 20% of their pay. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim revealed today that all cabinet ministers have agreed to take a 20% pay cut. Gaji motong ni memang tidak wajar, ya. Uh, tetapi uh, saya terima kasih kerana kesediaan mereka melakukan sedikit pengorbanan. Ada orang kata uh, Anwar patutlah dia tak ambil gaji Perdana Menteri kerana dia ambil gaji Menteri Kewangan. Tak betul, gaji ini satu saja. Anwar said this was in the spirit of being concerned with hardships faced by the people. Anwar spoke to reporters after chairing the cabinet meeting today. As for how long the salary cuts would be in place, Anwar replied that until the economy recovers. Said Sadiq met Muhyiddin and uploaded a selfie on social media. However, the Muda chief has denied this means he's backing PN. Muda President Said Sadiq has denied backing Perikatan National President Muhyiddin Yassin. This is after Said Sadiq uploaded an image on social media showing that they had met for two hours. When contacted, the Muar MP said he has been involved in bipartisan engagements since he was part of Pakatan Harapan after the 2018 general election. Taking to Instagram earlier today, Sai Sadiq said he is a strong believer in bipartisanship. He said the general election is over, now it's time to focus on serving the people. He added that despite being in a different party, his respect for Muhyiddin remains the same. He also urged leaders to build a Malaysia which is governed with integrity and dignity, a country where all Malaysians feel at home. Said Sadiq is the only Muda politician to win a parliamentary seat in GE15. Rafi Ziramli has explained why Anwar Ibrahim had to make the difficult decision of also being finance minister. He said Harapan had no other choice based on the current political situation. Economic Affairs Minister Rafizi Ramli said the extraordinary political climate in the country has made it necessary for Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim to take up the finance portfolio. I think it's an extraordinary circumstance. Um, ideally, yes. Kalau ikut pandangan saya secara idealnya, um, uh, kita pisahkan jawatan Menteri Kewangan dengan jawatan Perdana Menteri. Dan pendirian itu tidak berubah. In his maiden press conference as minister this morning, Rafizi added that the move was to not dissatisfy any component parties within the unity government. He argued that should the finance portfolio be given to either one of the leaders in the other parties, Rafizi alluded that it could be misconstrued and cause problems within the administration. Ada pandangan saya, itu satu keputusan yang sangat sukar yang telah diambil sebenarnya. Kerana bila kita ada gabungan-gabungan uh, yang masing-masing uh, membentuk kerajaan, sudah tentu setiap komponen mahu jawatan Menteri Kewangan itu berada di pihak mereka. Jadi kalau contohnya ada orang daripada PH yang jadi Menteri Kewangan pun, Itu akan ada masalah kepada BN. Kalau daripada BN, ada masalah kepada PH dan GPS dan lain-lain. Oleh kerana it's an extra do, extraordinary situation now, maka keputusan itu 
bagi saya sesuai buat masa sekarang iaitu senang Perdana Menteri yang jadi Menteri Kewangan supaya dia tak timbul isu tentang gabungan yang berbeza During his GE15 campaign, Rafizi wasn't too happy with the MACC after his office was raided. However, things raised during the heat of the campaign were not how he meant to say it. PKR Deputy President Rafizi Ramli clarified that he did not threaten to go after MACC Chief Commissioner Azambaki when campaigning in GE15. When asked by a reporter on the matter this morning, Rafizi explained that what he said was merely to serve as a political... Um, I don't think uh, that's exactly what I said. And I think um, it makes political sound bites or, you know, news bites. But um, what I meant was that, you know, um, should the new government... Uh, uh, takes over and we have um, the priority is to really make everything independent and makes everything by the law instead Rafizi said the priority now is to ensure enforcement agencies are independent on November 16th Rafizi said at a Harapan event that Azam must be taken to court over the MACC's raid of invoke solutions esok kita jumpa di mahkamah lusa kita mengundi lusa satu hari lagi kempen Hari Sabtu kita mengundi sedari-sedari. Lepas menang pilihan raya, kami cari Azam Baki insyaAllah. Saya harap Azam Baki. Saya tahu Azam Baki tengok ni. Saya harap bila Pakatan Harapan menang, kami cari kamu. Kamu jangan nak salahkan adik kamu sekali lagi. Rafizi's remarks courted backlash from various quarters, including former Inspector General of Police, Musa Hassan, Malaysia Corruption Watch, as well as Perikatan National Leaders. They said it was unprofessional for politicians to openly attack civil servants by threatening to take action against them. A Harapan leader says C. Sivaraj would be a good addition to the new government after he unconditionally threw his support behind Harapan in the Padang Serai election. Pakatan Harapan Secretary General Saifuddin Nasution Ismail said BN's Padang Serai candidate C. Sivaraj will be considered for a suitable role in the unity government. This is after Sivaraj agreed to give way and unconditionally support the Harapan candidate in the election on December 7th. Saifuddin said Sivaraj's withdrawal was made unconditionally. Saifuddin is also convinced that, as a young leader, Sivaraj deserves a spot in Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's government. Elaborating on Sivaraj's withdrawal from the election, Saifuddin said it was done following discussions between Harapan, MIC President S.A. Vignesh Swaran, and BN Chairperson Ahmad Zahid Hamidi. He said one of the reasons posed by Harapan in justifying BN's withdrawal was Harapan's agreement to give way to BN's candidates in the Tioman state election in Pahang. Gopal Sriram is attempting to adduce audio recording in regard to Najib Abdul Razak's 1MDB trial. And here's how he's planning to do it. The High Court in Kuala Lumpur heard today that a provision in the MACC Act 2009 seeks to counter the problem of proving corruption cases in court. Deputy Public Prosecutor Gopal Sriram orally submitted that Section 41A of the Act has been passed by the Parliament as proving corruption was not always easy. The DPP told trial judge Colin Lawrence Sequira that the provision facilitates the origin of evidence, such as an audio recording allegedly of former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak and a Middle Eastern royalty, which may not be capable of being established per the Evidence Act 1950. He submitted that the object of Section 41A is to prevent a person accused of an offence of corruption to escape the net as provenance could not be established. The DPP pointed out that the provision is housed in a statute to stamp out corruption, so it is only intended to be used to bring in evidence for an accused facing graft charges under the Act and not for those facing charges in a different law. The former federal court judge added that the provision does not affect Najib's right to a fair trial in relation to the 1MDB graft case. The prosecutor's submission is in furtherance of the prosecution's bid to adduce the audio recording in relation to Najib's ongoing 2.28 billion ringgit corruption trial. 
The audio recording is part of multiple recordings that were revealed by then MACC Chief Commissioner Latifa Koya in January 2020. They purportedly involve Najib and other 1MDB linked individuals. The hearing before trial judge Colin Lawrence Sequira resumes tomorrow morning. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.